Welcome back to another episode of PowerSlide TV. Today is not really about one specific product. What we're gonna to talk to you about is give you a little bit of information about wheels and certain characteristics of each wheel which affect performance and some examples of when to use which kind of wheel. So, uh, as you can see, we have a, quite a range of wheels from our brands here, whether it's Undercover, whether it's Matter, whether it's PowerSlide itself. Uh, we basically have wheels for all kinds of rolling sports. Um, the, the, probably the most obvious uh, question, because it's obviously one of the more visual questions, is what uh, what size of we what wheel size has an impact on performance? Talking about wheel size, uh, there's a simple formula. Let's say the smaller the wheel, the less speed you have. So with bigger wheels, obviously you're uh, faster. But the acceleration with smaller wheels is a little bit better. But in the end, you want to go fast. So if you want to keep the speed for a long time, the bigger wheels are better. And also with a smaller wheel, because you're, you're obviously sitting a little lower, so you have a bit more balance and control and things like that. So for example, uh, in the real world, if you're looking to buy a pair of swell skates and you're, let's say, a little bit more beginner to medium level, maybe look at kind of the 100 or 110 millimeter wheel option on the swell, as opposed to up to a 125. Then there's obviously a lot of different features in a wheel. One is the hub, one is the outside PU, and one thing is for sure the shape. And then it's little trick things which goes inside the PU, like additional hardnesses, dual density, and inserts. So talking first about the radius, Normally, a lot of the normal wheels, fitness, speed, we're using a speed radius, which is a sh rather sharp wheel. So when rolling, you have less resistance, uh, but also it's a little bit, it's easier to go from edge to edge, but it's a little bit difficult to keep the control because it's only like one point where you have contact and the footprint is quite less on this. And then you have the wider base, which is a more full radius, a more round radius. This is more like an urban skating, some hockey skaters prefer it. And you have it in different sizes. So this is an urban radius with a big wheel in 110. And this is for a smaller one. So this, as you can see, gives you a bigger footprint, more stability. And so when you do slides, jumping, and doing some gaps, it gives you more control when landing. And it also provides a little bit more PU. So when you're more into aggressive skating or sliding, it will add up more durability. And then you have just a flat radius. Uh, this is more or less used in aggressive skating. So it's all flat. So when you land, you have a lot of control and you have the shock is more transfer evenly to a wider platform, this too, and it offers more control. And it also seems like Matthias forgot uh, our friends at Matter and obviously my favorite part, but we also offer different profiles up in our 125 program. So the 125 comes with a wider profile and the G13 a narrower profile relative to speed skating. As Matthias already kind of said, the narrower profile is faster rolling, easier to skate on, but the wider profile just gives you a bit more grip and stability. So for example, again, a real world application, uh, guys like Bart Swings, hardcore racers, looking to skate marathons under one hour five, something like that. Or if you skate on roads where the road surface is a little bit bad, again, a wider profile will uh, take away some of the shock. Guys like me, a little bit slower, girls, things like that, G13 is a wheel for you. And then talking about the outside PU, there's a lot of different grades of PU. There's like Asia made PU, and normally in Asia, they have like two different levels, sometimes three different levels. The cheapest level, basically, which we don't really have, is like injected parts, where it can be even PVC injected materials or PU injected materials, which is when you bounce it, it's rock hard and basically has no rebound. And so what we are using in the entry level, we're using a high rebound wheel, which meaning is giving about back 80% of the rebound. The rebound, you can see it will be loud now. This is a rebound. So it's basically the energy you put in the wheel, the energy coming back. So this means in high rebound, 80% of the energy is coming back. And then it goes up to super high rebound wheels. And then it goes all to the formulas into the USA and matter wheels and undercover made wheels where the rebound is like a 95, 97 and even higher. And then it gets to into very tricky compounds, which a track specific, a road specific, and you know, for a circuit specific. Yeah, exactly. And uh, and then inside the actual outside formulas, there's different hardnesses. 
So if you want to, if you're wanting to look for softer and harder wheels, generally the rule is a softer wheel will provide you with more comfort, more grip, but the drawback will be it will roll a little bit slower. Again, the opposite is true for a harder wheel. Uh, again, it's going to be very, very fast rolling. Perfect if you're on smooth roads and things like that. The drawback is it will be a little bit more slippery and you will feel a lot more vibration. Um, again, moving forward a little bit with, uh, with hubs. Um, as you can see probably throughout all our wheel brands and wheel collection, hubs in general, there's a, there's a huge range, not only by size, but also function and style, which uh, the hubs are designed to do, meaning to that kind of niche of skating. So for example, um, a stiffer hub, or do you want to take, you want to talk? I, I want to give in a little bit, talking about the aggressive coming oh. in there's basically there's almost not no really. Hub in that. Yeah, there's <laughs> almost, we call it like a tunnel or a channel hub. So it's just holding the bearing. So it's a hard piece of plastic holding the pla uh, the bearings basically in place and giving uh, support and rigidity to the whole wheel. I mean, and the reason you have such a small core is there's not. The wheel is so small, so there can't be a big, right. big core like with, with stars and whatever. And also, and you want cool. to have the nice PU for shock absorbing, and you don't want to wear and you want to wear it down a little bit more. So there's no really space for a hub. But also, there is a dome inside, which will be shown here in the middle between Scott and me. He means so a mechanical lock. <laughs> I call it dome, he calls it mechanical interlock. So this is where basically the Eurosane flows around and connects better to the hub to make it stronger connection. And But the dome or the interlock actually gives you also a little bit more roll. So the higher and the stiffer the interlock is, the more roll you get out of a wheel basically. And normally uh, that can be also an inside on the dome or actually the dome is cut out and then will be another insert. Uh, like a band inside the wheel. Matthias is already talking about the next step, but going back to hubs, oh, yeah. um, when we're looking at hubs, uh, generally most hubs are made from one piece, okay? And so a one piece core, uh, in general, it's, it's designed, there's different grades of it. So for example, something like this, what you see on the spinner wheel, there's a lot of material in there and it's very, very stiff. So for urban and things like that, where you may be doing stair rides and jumping a little bit, you want to have it as stiff and as strong as possible. So not only will it uh, will it hold up, but a stiffer core in general rolls faster. Uh, but the drawback is you'll feel a lot of vibration and um, it's a little harder to maneuver. Whereas if you're looking for something like this where it's a little bit more flexible, obviously it won't hold up for jumping or stair rides or things like that. But if you're out cruising on the roads, then you want a little bit more flex in the core because it will help you with your push and things like that. Also stepping in, sorry, it will help with the grip in the corners and also, you know, when you're doing slides and stuff like this. So the hub flexibility is quite important and that's why we are also using different materials actually for the hub. Uh, we're using PC material, polycarbonate. We're using like a TPU material, which is a PU, which is more flexible and gives you actually a more comfortable ride and uh, more grip. And we're also using some nylon blends actually in different wheels. And then probably one of the most, well, not one of probably the most famous core in all of uh, skating is probably the hollow core and that's where Matthias gets his world famous dome technology from because inside here is an actual hollow dome that goes up inside the urethane not on this specific wheel because obviously a g13 but uh and that's where the hollow core so the hollow core itself is really unique because we can keep it very lightweight but at the same time maintaining a lot of stiffness so that's why when you're looking at uh, G13 or Super Juice or those wheels, the straight line rolling performance on them is really great because of that really stiff hollow core in there. Um, for cores and then again, this is something where Matthias just spoke about a little bit about what role the core has. You may notice the 125s now, they come uh, with a CHR core. And this is because we did a lot of testing and development with our team. And we noticed, okay, the disc core we used to have is really really great for straight up marathons and straight up roll but the hollow but what we wanted to do was introduce something with a little bit more flexibility maneuverability and and grip too so that's why we went down this road too just to just to add a couple more options in it too um i guess i should talk about a inner band and things like that right yeah, that's probably yeah. you're the mr inner band for sure okay. but maybe i start first with dual density <sighs> he always has to get the first word in <laughs> So dual density, we actually we're using in aggressive, we're using, we're using actually in free skating where we have the, the DEFCON wheel and 
but it's a little bit same strategy. Basically you have two different hardnesses of PU. So here in this case, we have a hard outside in aggressive. So it's abrasion resist and holds up really long, but you have a soft inside. So when you do jumps and gaps, the inside really compresses and acts like a shock absorber and then actually gives the energy back. So this is really helping for a very nice and smooth ride. It uh, takes away the shocks and actually adds a rebound. So it's a very fast wheel too. So this is a dual density from undercover and we have one from power slide with a defcon wheel and then we have the built-in ones actually which you don't see uh, inside the wheels from matter and also from power slide the infinity and the plus. infinity plus no the infinity the doesn't have one material oh, yeah. oh infinity God. plus i'm sorry scott yeah anyway so getting on to a little bit more race specific um because that's obviously where an inner band is most common now because most high well all high-end race wheels whether it's track road or marathon feature an inner band the inner band is uh, as matthias said it has a it has a lot of function it does a lot of work uh, there's a, there's a lot of variations on it too. So it's all, not only the the width, so thinner or wider, but also the hardness too. General rule of thumb is a uh, thinner inner band will roll better. So that's what we actually have in like our G13 and also our 125 marathon specific wheels. Whereas a wider band will offer more grip, more security, and a little bit more comfort. Um, different hardnesses also play on that too. So it's uh, different things to consider there as well. Um, with inner bands, uh, there is also options like we have on our Infinity Plus wheel where the inner band sits on top of the mechanical lock. Dome, you mean? Mechanical lock. Okay, dome. <laughs> what that does is basically it, uh, it increases roll. Um, so therefore it just, uh, again, a marathon specific wheel where you roll is obviously one of the most important characteristics. Uh, that's why that wheel is designed that way. Uh, but again, as you can probably guess, this is a long video. So maybe one thing to add in, it's a little bit the surface. Uh, all the wheels come basically shiny. Some have a matte finish, mm -hmm. but they're still a very a coating over it basically and this is also to do basically with a rolling and with a grip mm. and some of the speed skates you know there are some sprinters 300 meter sprinters they're using a wheel only one time basically for 300 meters because when the little shine comes on the grip is not anymore 100 percent there for normal average scale this doesn't matter at all and will you know most of the wheels are very long and durable but basically keep always look for it that you always keep the shine and also that's why i'm just saying it flip around the wheels early as possible so you don't wear it down unevenly and then it cutting down and you don't creating edges which will be not nice for skating that's a really good point and what uh stay tuned because we'll probably you may or may not have seen it already but there is a video coming uh how to actually rotate your wheels and uh front to back left and right and things like that it's a little bit like a car tire where it needs to kind of go in certain positions and it should be rotated in a, in a certain way Thanks for watching. Uh, again, a huge video. Let me finish it off with my traditional leave all your comments down below because I'm expecting lots of questions and comments in this one. And Matthias will answer them all personally. Yeah. Keep the rebound up. Thanks for watching.